now is an incredible independent hip hop artist. And I noticed something after the first few times that I'd worked with him. Every time he comes into the studio, he's got this super dope uh, vintage jersey on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and it's always a different one, you know. Uh, the, he was actually in the studio last night, which made me think about this. And he was wearing the, the Will Smith uh, Bel Air Academy jersey. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, the last session I had, he had the Michael Jordan Space Jam jersey. Mm. Uh, and so he's got all these, these, you know, these different jerseys. So I invited him to start a campaign around, uh, I don't say a campaign, but like a content strategy around all these different jerseys they have that he wears and what they mean to him. Mm. Now that's not necessarily directly related to his music, but right. I would imagine that there's many other Jersey collectors and, and people that enjoy that type of fashion that are also fans of his style of hip hop music. And that's a great way for him to be able to make that introduction with a common interest, right? As opposed to saying, Hey, I'm another hip hop artist. Come and listen to my tracks because they're dope. You can, you can have a, a, a really um, more intimate way and, and a personal way of connecting with an audience. So let me ask you this. If I have, let's say, one of these things, like the Jersey thing going on, or if I have this story, like you mentioned, like the homeless father, or I mentioned the the young lady with uh, the mom dying from cancer, or you alluded to, you know, the people who want to kind of live life to the fullest. Let's say I have that that focus or I have that that strong interest or that's that's something that makes me drive as an individual and I happen to be an artist. Do I then take that and try to create like an audience out of that? Let's say I'm into, you know, uh, promoting, I don't know, awareness about cancer. But let's say people in the audience, they don't care about that. Do I try to focus only on those who are maybe that resonates with my life experiences? Like, would I lose people if I focus too much on, you know, these individual kind of uh, goals in life from a personal standpoint? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think initially the idea is that you got to cut through a lot of noise. Mm. You know, every every week there's tens of thousands of songs. You know, you hear these statistics that are getting uploaded to Spotify. Right. And there's just a, there's an, a, a, an incredible uh, saturation in the market of material that's coming out. And so how do you find, uh, uh, you know, a niche to be able to break out within? Mm-hmm. And there's, there's also been a number of studies done that, that show that like the modern recording artists can really survive out of like a thousand like super fans. Wow. So that's where, you know, we look at like we don't necessarily need to start with being Beyonce. We uh, like where she is now, you know, we need to we need to start by focusing on a core group of people that are going to become cheerleaders for our art. Mm. So as opposed to be worrying about who you might miss along along the way, understand that that eventually those people are going to become aware of you because you have this support network, you know, around you it might be similar to like a, a, a young um, independent politician that doesn't have all the connections and resources and money and investment yet. But they build a, a really strong relationship in their community with small groups of people yeah. that then become their their, uh, you know, marketers that are going out and telling people about them and sharing. So when we think about content, we want to we want to ask, is it um, is it valuable, purposeful and shareable? And so is someone going to see this and want to share it with other people because they align with it? And we can't do that if we try to reach everyone at the same time. Okay. The only way that's going to work is if we find that that niche group of people that are going to um, be our super fans to align with us. And then that will help us reach out to those other maybe, you, you know, um, uh, just generalized fans that might listen to our stuff every once in a while. And we need both of them. So take me deeper into that, because you mentioned something that maybe went quickly for some people who are listening. You said that I can have potentially a thousand super fans and I can actually eat. I can make a living. Walk walk me through. Who is this super fan? What, what's a super fan? Um, in, in my perception, a super fan is someone that's like the, the, the perfect person that like your music is like made for. Mm. So that's where we, we look at those um, specific characteristics that your music and that you as a person and as an artist have and who are the people that that that, that combination of things is going to most likely connect with uh. um, so I have this worksheet that I work through with with artists and it has a bunch of questions on it that dive like way beyond beyond music but we try to create a um, a, uh, a virtual structure of who that super fan is mm. uh, so some of those questions might might have to do with like fashion like what type of clothes do they wear um, where do, where do they uh, where do they shop? Uh, what type of books do they read? What type of TV shows do they watch? Uh, we start to create this profile 
of what of what your fan um, might be. Uh, the other the other thing to look at with fans is where do they consume music. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, like there's a different group of people that are consuming music on Spotify and consuming music on SoundCloud. Right. So, like if you're a, if you're up and coming like uh, electronic DJ or a um, hip hop producer um, that or uh, or just like or a, or a hip hop artist or something, um, SoundCloud can be a really great way to start to build a community around other uh creatives that are that are discovering um you know your music right um and 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 so there's there's these different platforms uh in in which people are looking to discover specific types of music now aside from like streaming platforms there's different uh different blogs so i don't want to like keep diving into just the hip-hop thing but like um uh, on you know in hip-hop there's like world star hip-hop for example Mm -hmm. is a is a Great site that will that will that, that features artists. A lot of it is major stuff, but there's people that get picked up because they're trending. You know, right? Uh, in, uh, in the country side of things, there's uh, there's blogs like uh, like the Boot and and um, and different uh, platforms that are that are looking for and discovering um, new talent. And so you find like what is that uh, that medium in the virtual world in your specific market mm-hmm. that is discovering new artists. And then we do a case study. So how are those artists getting picked up? What are the things that are happening in their in their career in order for that, you know, that to happen? So is it that their songs are getting added to certain playlists and then those are the ones that those um, trending like, you know, bloggers are, are picking up? Um, does it have to do with uh, a, a video that goes viral? Um, does someone did someone blow up on TikTok with some really interesting thing that then got, you know, shared around? Um, so we start to just dive a little bit deeper into that research process to understand how this discovery is happening. And then we just work that equation backwards and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, and apply it to ourselves in our own uh, unique way. Okay. So, and let's take it back to what I believe is the, the typical person in our audience. I feel like a lot of people who are listening right now, number one, they're getting an amazing amount of information and knowledge, but I also understand that some of us may feel like our our, our brains are getting frozen over by how much um, that's that has to be done and yep. and how much is out there for us to to learn. What is your advice for someone who's just maybe concerned with just making a hot track and just want to drop it on Spotify or whatever platform? What's our next step in terms of actually doing the things that you're talking about? Because this is far different than being in the studio just tracking things i mean this is now getting into some other levels of business where do i begin like what are some initial steps like you mentioned like a worksheet and things like that Mm -hmm. help help me understand that as an artist yeah absolutely well i have some great solutions uh this is a very challenging thing for creatives artists are so quick to to invest money time and resources into creating art because that's what they're super passionate about true but with a majority of artists that are just starting out, when I start to talk to them about business, their eyes roll back in their head <laughs> right. and they're like, yeah, man, I just want to make the music. Exactly. You know, I'm not good at that. And I'm not, I'm not excited about that, you know? And then when, and then the ones that are open to diving into it a little bit more, more often than not, they get super overwhelmed because there's so much to do. Exactly. And then that overwhelming feeling uh, results in paralysis and then they just go back into creating more music and then the cycle continues and th- they're making great music. They're enjoying that process, but they're getting super bummed out and eventually burnt out right. because they're not getting the, um, the feedback and the, um, and the interest in their music that, right. they're, that they're hoping for. And so we have to understand that it's just it, it's, it's a necessary part of the modern music industry. Um, have to create great art first. Um, but then that art has to be able to be distributed out and it's got to cut through through the noise. So there's a couple solutions that I have for helping people work through that. Okay. The first is just is to decide what you want with your career. So if you have a, a full time job that pays your bills and that, that you're fine with and you're, you're cool with doing that for the rest of your life. But music is just fun and it's a hobby and you want to create it and put it out. And if people find it, they find it. If they don't, you're still creating it. And that fulfills you. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. all right. uh, and, and you can totally do that um, and not have to necessarily dive into all of these things. Uh, but I assume if someone's listening to this, they're, they're, pro- they're more than likely, they probably have a, a little bit of a higher standard for what they where they hope their career is going to 
go to and the impact that their music is going to have. And if you're in that position, um, then we have to just accept that this is a necessary process of being able to have your art have impact. Mm. So just as inspiring as it is to create the music, we should be just as inspired to dive into understanding how to get more ears on it because that's going to allow more people to be inspired by it. So I use that as my motivation. Right. And as motivation that I try to um, incorporate into the artists that I work with, it's not about becoming a, it's not about solely just becoming an entrepreneur because you have to you know do it yourself. It's about taking the perspective that by doing that, uh-huh. we will be able to reach and impact more people with our music. Okay. So the result of it is really what's important. And if we can focus on that, I think uh, for me, at least it's easier to be motivated with that, with that. Mo- it's easier to stay motivated with that as the, the motivation behind it. Yo, again, Sean Giovanni, man, this guy is a beast and he's providing amazing knowledge. And guess what? There is more for you to learn. Subscribe to the podcast because we're going to be back next week with part two of this series. Sean goes a lot further. Yo, again, special thanks to Sean Giovanni from the record shop down in Nashville. Hey, check us next week. $10 a day.